Science Turks. Science Turks. Science Turks. Welcome to the Science Jerks. I'm Dave Chacho, your host, and with me as always is your other host, Robert Chan. Hi. And we are very excited to be coming to you straight from the MaximumFun.org studios (laughs) across from beautiful MacArthur Park in Los Angeles. And that is because we are talking to the proprietor of MaximumFun.org, comedy impresario. That's a good word. Svengali. (laughs) Svengali of comedy. Um. I groom young boys to become comedians. (laughs) Colonel Parker, yes. From the podcasts Judge John Hodgman and Jordan Jesse Go, Jesse Thorne, welcome to the show. Of course. Thank you very much for having me. Welcome to our studios and welcome to the beautiful environs of MacArthur Park. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) love it down here. This is quite a step up from the Science Jerks lab, which may or may not be my breakfast nook. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, one piece of advice, though, when you're here at right next to MacArthur Park, remember not to leave your cake out in the rain. I couldn't even go through the whole (laughs) stupid... (laughs) Does that happen a lot to you? It does. It happens all all the time. <laughs> Everyone is always leaving their cakes out in the rain. <laughs> yeah. In MacArthur Park. Well, you have a nice view of the cakes out in the park <laughs> yeah, getting rained do. on from your studio. <laughs> yeah, the cakes, cakes are legion. The youth fishing competition and the junkies. Those are the main <laughs> three main activities in MacArthur Park. I think that that's what people come to Los Angeles for, right? Yeah, that Absolutely. And- that in the uh, junkies and cakes appear. And you know, there's actually cakes. a Yelp page for MacArthur Park here in Los Angeles, and <laughs> it had. Does it have ratings of the park? It does, and <laughs> there's a particular character to a Los Angeles Yelp review, and I think it was completely encapsulated. They usually have something about driving, some mild racism, and <laughs> then something you know that's a little useful. And it was like the Yelp review of MacArthur Park that I read was like it was like a three three out of five I think it got and it said um, parking is easy there's a big lake it's really quite nice except for the illegals (laughs) I don't even know where to begin with it I can't even (sighs) they're just worried about people being legal they they could be the junkies because exactly. they're doing illegal things sure. and they don't understand English. Uh, among people of my white race here in Los Angeles, I've come to learn that illegals is a word for Mexicans, which is a word <laughs> which for Latinos. Sounds <laughs> slightly less racist than saying I'm sick of all these Mexicans. Yeah, if exactly. You say, if, then it, if you say illegals, it sounds like you're concerned about the law. Yeah. You're concerned about people exactly. following society's rules. What if they're tourists? What if they don't know the lingo? And that's just what it means to them. People who do illegal drugs are illegals. So that's probably what it is. I find that more and more tourists are reviewing parks on Yelp. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're talking about people fishing in the lake without a license. You know, there's a lot of fishing in the lake. Are there fish fishing. in the lake? Yeah, the, the fish is the lake is stocked with fish. In fact, we have a big picture window here in our office that looks out on the park and the other day a fish truck backed up to the like boat loading oh to stock ramp there's they stock it a pipe came out of it and then just fish started shooting out of this <laughs> pipe <laughs> it was amazing it was one of the best things i've ever seen in my entire life and i've seen oh, a lot thanks. of good things <laughs> now i don't know about the health of fish in general but isn't most of that lake urine yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, frankly, 20% of it is guns. <laughs> but, of, yeah. It's, so you get a lot of gun and urine taste in the, the mm-hmm. fish you pull out of there? Yeah. Well, you get to spend some time with nature. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried that they're going to go up to Griffith Park and there's just going to be a truck that just shunts out little deer for people to <laughs> shoot down. <laughs> sport fishing, sport hunting. Are we trying to make people feel at home? Stocking with deer in the deer truck. Well, anyway, uh, welcome to our office. It's nice to be here. Thanks for having us. And I think it's time to say let's do some science. Science song, I bet, is playing right now. Yep. 
Ever since we have started science podcasting, I have been fascinated with bugs, uh, eukaryotes, like microbes. Chan here with Chacho and guest Jesse Thorne. They've been making a lot of advancements. Now there's a name for it. it. It's already been a name, but I just found out about it. It's called the hollow genome. It's the idea that the microbes in your body are part of this entire entity. Kind of like you've got a symbiotic relationship between two things. Uh, I, re- I read about this recently. This is why now at the hospital sometimes, if you're having stomach problems, they will, uh, after you've had antibiotics, they will take some of your poop and install it yes. in your tummy. Yes, yeah, a thing called a fecal transplant yes. that exists where they will take an entire colon's worth of someone else's feces and well, not a surgically install it in someone who has a low bacteria count. Not a whole colon's worth. I have a huge colon. (laughs) You would not believe the volume of feces that I contain. Well, you might have some left over. (laughs) True. Uh, A few odds and ends. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, if you uh, take too many antibiotics, then all of the good flora gets wiped out, and then you're uh, at risk of developing all sorts of other mm-hmm. terrible, terrible things. That, so that this... happened to my friend Tig Notaro. She... Tig, yes, this did happen to Tig. I heard about that. that yeah, she, yeah she, she, well, she had a horrible disease. She had something, pneumonia or something. She, her pneumonia turned yeah, even worse, and, and, and then, then when she, she took she antibiotics. Be- because of the antibiotics, wiped out all of her, you know, all of her good flora, uh, she got one of those killer bugs and very nearly was killed by it. She Yeesh. almost died from, yeah, from intestinal the, problems, I think, yeah. resulting in her bacteria yeah, It's terrifying. killed up. Did they Absolutely do a poop terrifying. Did they do a poop transplant? I don't think they did it. I feel like I would know. I feel like she'd have brought that up. <laughs> That's a standard community. Hopefully you would use that. If, I, yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. otherwise, what's the point? You know? <laughs> <laughs> if you can't use the poop transplant. <laughs> but this is a great concept. I've never heard this term either used before, hollow genome, but it's a pretty cool idea that a human body or even, you know, an animal body or, you know, an ant, whatever it is, consists of the organism itself plus all the microorganisms that are inside of it working as a team to complete the task of being yeah they that. call it a performance unit mm-hmm. like the person and the things inside can i ask you guys a question mm-hmm. do you ever think that it's just like one big galaxy and we're all just stars <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure you're gonna say it's just one big galaxy and we're all just like uh creatures in a colon we're in, yes. we're in the galaxy's butthole. What if the universe is just a huge intestine and we're just all being pushed through it, guys? <laughs> that wasn't coffee in your little bear this morning, was it? It is an interesting question, though, the question of what constitutes the you of you? It's one that can get very upsetting if you think about it too much, frankly. <laughs> sure. But if, you know, if our bodies are really teams of cells all working together and connected together and constantly replacing themselves, mm. why doesn't the bacteria in our gut count if the if like say the, you know, the digestive juices in our gut count? Well, the reason is because people think it's disgusting. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you know, from time immemorial, the things that come out of the other end are taboo. Nothing's just supposed do don't touch it don't put it back in because it'll kill you also but, bacteria you're you're trained to think that that is, will make you sick that it, it, it's bad for you right that it's something you don't want when in actuality there are microorganisms inside of us that we cannot live without yeah and as we're finding out more and more like there was a study last year where they took out the bugs in mice and they started getting depressed or I think what they did was they severed a particular nerve that interacted with their stomach and that caused you know like behavioral changes mm-hmm. that are a direct result of um, the microbes hey do you guys know about this thing in cat poop that makes people crazy yes <laughs> toxoplasmosis <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. that's amazing <laughs> see uh, to be fair this is probably part of the reason why it concerns me so much because I have a cat I'm like wait a minute did that cat give me toxoplasmosis do I have little things growing in, in my brain stem right now that are making me more aggressive and making me more Isn't make me want to be the eaten by a cat the, the, there's no test for it, but it, it, they think it's very commonplace that a lot of people have. Yeah, it's airborne in cat feces. So if you've had a cat, it's likely that you have it. And <laughs> it leads to 
they think. I mean, there's not a huge amount of body of study of this thing. So yet, it's just emerging now because it's so crazy. Mm-hmm. Like before, <laughs> everyone was like, no, that's really crazy. <laughs> like you're just being crazy. But it, they crazy think cat that, lady used to be just a fun euphemism. Yeah, but like the 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 evidence suggests that for certain things, like I think it's like impulsiveness, right? And schizophrenia. That, yeah, it's that it is actually a really sig- can really significantly change your personality. You know, by maybe twenty, thirty percent more impulsive, which can lead to health issues like. The one that they were studying when I when I read about this study was they were studying whether having a cat and being infected with toxoplasmosis led to you crashing your car more often. <laughs> oh yeah, and the evidence suggested that it did. That's why I don't I have if a it, car. If it leads <laughs> people to, die. to make the fateful choice of trying to go into comedy. <laughs> like, w- I think cats come after comedy. Like, once you once you do start doing stand-up, then you start feeling the need for a cat. After a comedy beats you down and makes you a depressed husk of a person. There are probably microbes on uh, improv stage mics that uh, get into your body and change your behavior. <laughs> I think I went into... There's going to be toxoplasmosis <laughs> in every comedy theater. I never had a cat. I think it's possible I went into comedy to justify the fact that as a 10-year-old, I named my pet at Boutros Boutros Froggy. <laughs> <laughs> and ever since then, you've been running away. From- exactly. If I became an accountant, been then, rationalizing ooh, that boy. decision. Yeah. <laughs> the other weird thing uh, that they're starting to think might be the case is it may have a significant role in evolution because they found they taught some fruit flies or is mosquitoes? Fruit flies. Uh, fruit flies to only eat a specific kind of molasses and not this other kind of sugar. And they ended up oh, not speciating, but like one group of fruit flies that ate the molasses wouldn't have sex with the other fruit flies, which means uh, that's part of the thing about a species if they can't interbreed. So because if you kept the doing food that. food that they were eating was changing the biology of the microbes inside the fruit flies. And it basically, it almost did speciate them because they wouldn't interbreed anymore with the other fruit flies that had the other microbes. They talked about hyenas. Different packs have different microbes which cause different scents. And so hyenas with different scents will not interbreed with other, you know, groups. The idea here is that if if you can change... The, the flora. The microbes, the yeah. flora inside you. Then you can start digesting different things, like uh, like being able to digest milk. I mean, you know, there aren't, I don't have the bugs in my body to be able to digest milk. I mean, obviously I can still mate with ladies who are not lactose intolerant. I <laughs> Uh, although you can try, <laughs> that may, you that may be part of the reason why I don't get a lot of dates. <laughs> they can smell the uh, lactose intolerance on me. But um, if you eat enough bugs, then someday <laughs> that you might be able to change your physiology. Yeah, yeah, you can you can pass that down. You can pass down the microbiome to your children and whatnot, and you know, in in that way, gain advantages that other people might not. So the idea is that you can actually make sort of evolution-like changes within a lifetime in a single generation of a species. Eating cheese is not a positive by evolutionary adaptation. Eating cheese. That's how I grew these claws. <laughs> Vitality. I wasn't so upset about global climate change until I read that our coffee might be gone in a matter of generations. Chacho and Chan here with our guest, Jesse Thorne. You say generations plural, there, so well, I'll be dead before this happens. I mean, soon, our coffee, there's mm. a coffee crisis mm. happening right now. Mm. You know, coffees have generations, too. Oh, oh, the generations, okay. Oh, God, now I feel like I'm going to be drinking the children of <laughs> coffee that I've drunk in the past. That's weird. Now I feel personal. and Yeah, it's oh. like a Larry McMurtry novel. <laughs> it's a vast saga. <laughs> Just last week, I was drinking your grandpa. <laughs> he went down smooth with some milk and sugar. Brazil by Larry McMurtry. <laughs> is that where coffee is grown? Probably. <laughs> Colombia? Yeah, in uh, the South and Central America and also in uh, Central and North Africa. So what's the problem here with the coffee? It's Well, the climate is changing and coffee, unfortunately, is a very fickle 
tree. It's a fickle species. Says you. I walk into Starbucks and there are dozens of different locales. Apparently, they come from they come from Asia. They come from Indonesia. They come from Africa, South America. Hawaii is super expensive. You wouldn't yeah. believe the number of names of places he can say with a contemptuous <laughs> tone. <laughs> Keep going. Uh, three years working at Starbucks, I, I've picked up a fair Ethiopia. number of uh, Sumatra. <laughs> Coffee prices have been going up a lot recently, and the reason is they're getting harder and harder to cultivate because temperatures are rising on these mountains where they they're grown. Coffee is very sensitive to temperature and it's very sensitive to rainfall and both have been changing drastically over the last 10 years and so coffee supplies have been dwindling. But I thought they like like warm tropical tropical places with lots of water and like the, lots of rain and uh, if they this, like if... rain but they also like they like cool mountain air. I mean they're grown usually at altitudes where mm. there's a sort of a microclimate they say between 23 and 30 centigrade, which is, uh, it's, what is uh, that? It's like 220 degrees, 60s I think, and 70s. Fahrenheit. I don't. Mm, <laughs> yeah, my, no. my dad was actually <laughs> in the. That's boiling point. <laughs> My dad was actually in the coffee business for a while um, oh, yeah? as part of an NGO. And, yeah, that's exactly the kind of context where they grew them actually in Laos, which is obviously in Southeast Asia, that they have those. It's a tropical country, but it's a tropical Spicy country beans. with mountains. And the mountainous regions are temperate. Mm-hmm. So if the seas rise, that means like the Appalachians will now be perfect coffee growing. With we'll just have to move well, it. It's we fine. We might have to move There's them a... further and further from the equator. So maybe like the mountains of Canada will become the next. I'm okay. I don't care where it comes from. Mm, I just want it in my really mouth. Really good Newfoundland. <laughs> oh my! This British Columbia is delightful. <laughs> maple notes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Although yeah, they will all have maple notes, and I'm not too fond of that. But <laughs> so what they're doing is they're trying to crossbreed different species of coffee to make them hardier. When to a lesser extent, give them powers. <laughs> and give them <laughs> superpowers. What they're trying to do, and one of the interesting things is the country of Ethiopia has several different strains of coffee than the rest of the world. All of the coffee in the Americas comes from, I think they said from France. And so all of the trees that they grow coffee in South America have almost exactly the same genetics. And that's a bad thing because you can't really crossbreed and you get a less hardy species. Basically, they're inbred it's coffee. Be, it's bean racism. That's what happens when, when you do that. You get coffee rednecks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You get a bunch of inbred coffee. You that, run the risk of a coffee famine. Yeah, and that's what's happening. We should let brown beans marry white beans and make hardier uh, uh, offspring. I'll tell that's, you, I'm against it. Is that Ethiopia is refusing right now to release their, uh, their different strains of coffee. The government has a very tight hold because it's one of the biggest industries of the country and so they're hoarding genetic materials yes <laughs> ethiopia is hoarding coffee genetics coffee worldwide is the second biggest commodity right now to oil so it's a it's a huge industry why aren't we invading ethiopia we're sending drones to afghanistan and blowing innocent people all the shit and we're not going after probably even more economically depressed area just waltzing in there and taking their coffee i think what we could take ethiopia not? hell yeah we could i am a diehard pacifist but god help me if you cut off my coffee i will go to I war Old people are... Disgusting. Maybe. <laughs> but they are imbued with superpowers. Chacho and Chan here with our guest Jesse Thorne. And a new term called the super agers is gaining attention. This isn't just a ploy for more uh, Taken movies, is it? There's like a whole genre now of like old people action movies. So well, that's because there's no young people to be in action movies. Oh, true enough. Yeah. I After... think it's sort of similar to the old people westerns that took up, you know, in the 70s and 80s <laughs> as people from westerns got old. <laughs> <laughs> so the the modern version of action films for like teenagers right now, the movies they're going to see are what like mumblecore films. I think in twenty years we're going to be watching movies about old superheroes. Right now, uh, it's just the Canadian independent film Strangers in Good Company. <laughs> That's for all my independent film enthusiasts out there. <laughs> Is that old people mumblecore? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much. These are the uh, the drawbacks of people living longer and longer. Sure. But, which I'm fully against 
until I get to that age. Right. I'm starting to get to the point where I'm in favor of them extending lifetimes. I'm getting, and uh, I just got my third one. Uh, the first one was about a year ago. Insurance things from AARP. Like, hey, why don't you sign up for this life insurance? I'm like, no. I am not old enough for me to be getting any mail from the AARP. I assumed when you said, I've been getting, and I'm on about my third one now, I assumed it was some sort of super serum injections. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking he was going to say hemorrhoids. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so we all had a different idea of where you were headed mm, with that. And yeah. I, frankly, we were all disappointed with where you were, <laughs> with where you were going. Uh, I am disappointed that I don't have super serum uh, injections. I am not disappointed that I don't have hemorrhoids. So I am calling this a wash. <laughs> I don't know if any of us are superagers, and I wish there was a test for it. What is a superager? That's just so, someone that lives a really long time? Or someone who's awesome at old age? The thing with old like age Ian is McKellen? we don't really know why humans get old and decrepit and wear out and die. It's kind Probably of, Jeopardy. It may be correlation and not causation, but old people watch Jeopardy and old people are old. That's true. Actually, one of our correspondents, Max Drew, was on Jeopardy. He is old as shit. He's only 25, but he looks like 70. Yeah. So that's a good theory. Mm-hmm. They think that old age might be a gene that turns on at some point and makes you makes your body stop replenishing itself and start to decline. And since you only need to get to about 20 to reproduce, the old age gene is just a mistake that's been in our DNA for 10,000 years because you don't need to get, you know, past 20 and You've already the, done the deed mm -hmm. <laughs> right. and so seriously though have you guys done the deed <laughs> oh, it's, great. it's great is it what's it like i read a lot of books <laughs> so i feel like i have done it right oh, i understand i've watched people do you guys it. are science podcasters i get it <laughs> <laughs> oh man this podcast is going to lead to us doing so much deed <laughs> Right? You've been podcasting a while, Jesse. I'll tell you where the deed is. Public radio host. <laughs> you host a public radio show, you'll be armpit deep in whatever you like. Indeed. Yeah. <laughs> deep in deed. Neck indeed. <laughs> so they've been studying old people, finally, because why not? They're just sitting around. Well, there's well more and more them. of them. Jesus. Yeah, they're everywhere. They're clogging our streets. They've found a certain percentage, I think it was like the 17% or something, of these Older humans age really well, and they don't know why, but they think it's a genetic thing that they have. It's a gene that they have where they don't decline. Their mental health of the people they studied in their 80s was as crisp and clear as a normal, you know, 50-year-old. So if we figure out why Helen Mirren is still hot then we may be able to yeah. apply that to our own persons. It might be a matter of injecting a little bit of Helen Mirren into all of us. I am okay with that. Get a sample from her colon. Mm. <laughs> just, just start passing but, it around. Helen, if you're listening, <laughs> we're going to need a little sample we're gonna, of your feces. We're going to need you to bend over for about four days. And if this isn't anything sexual. No. Yeah. It's Helen Mirren, about first of all. Science. <laughs> First of all, I want to say a thousand apologies. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a quiz. It's time for... It's, it's time, time for a quiz. Uh, our quiz master is absent today. So we, against my better judgment, we got a quiz bot. I thought this was your better judgment. Uh, well, I mean, on, obviously, quiz master, first choice. Quiz masquerist, second choice. Third choice, quiz homeless robot. guy in front of the Coney's Hot Dogs on Wilshire. He turned you um, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he turned me down. He, he yelled obscenities at me, which... He does every day anyway. So we have QuizBot so, uh, 2013. Let's turn them online and uh, let's get going here. Hello, Meatbags. I am QuizBot 5000. I am here to kick ass and ask questions, and I am all out of ass kicking apparatuses. Are you ready? Like he's he kind doesn't of a know dick. how to say apparatus. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was also a free QuizBot, and I didn't spend anything on a voice, a genuine voice synthesizer. What's the first question? These questions come from the year-end quiz at newscientist.com. Number one. 
Which of these strange creatures were discovered this year? A. A fish, found in a canal in Vietnam, that wears its genitals under its mouth. B. A frog, found in a puddle in Peru, that has no spleen. C. A lizard, found in a cave in Indonesia, that has four left feet. D. A cat, found in a tree in northern England, that has eight extra teeth. <coughs> Two. Which of these frighteningly named vegetables has an active ingredient being trialed as a treatment for prostate cancer? A. Poison celery. B. Murder beans. C. Inconvenience potatoes. D. Death carrots. Inconvenience potatoes doesn't sound too frightening. <laughs> was murder beans one of the choices? Murder beans was one of the choices. I ain't go with that. Three. The eyes are the windows to the soul. Which of these is an actual window to science? A. A perspex peephole set in the nest of the fearsome Japanese giant hornet to reveal its domestic habits. B. A glass portal implanted in the abdomen of a mouse to reveal the process of tumor metastasis. C. A crystal portal in the inner vessel of an experimental thorium reactor to reveal its nuclear fires to the naked eye. D. A small window high on the wall of a basement office in the Princeton Physics Department to reveal a small patch of sky to postgraduate students who have not been outside for seven years. Four. There is a new material for violin strings, said to produce a brilliant and complex sound richer than that of catgut. What makes up these super strings? A. Mousecut. B. Spider silk. C. Braided carbon nanotubes. D. An alloy of yttrium and ytterbium. I like that it pronounces robot and catgut the same way. <laughs> Five, global warming isn't all bad, which is a possible positive side effect we may one day see. A. Receding Arctic sea ice will make it easier to lay undersea cables to boost internet speeds. B. Increasing temperatures mean that Greenlanders can soon start making their own wine. C. Rising sea levels could allow a string of new beach resorts to open in the impoverished country of Chad. D. More acidic seawater will add a pleasant tang to the salt water taffy sweets made in Atlantic City. Oh, what a jokester this robot is. <laughs> That's all for today, you tiny-brained compost heaps. I'm about to go cruising Hollywood with Lieutenant Commander Data and Sonny from iRobot. I've printed out the answers since I can't be bothered. Okay, well, that thanks. seemed unnecessary. Course, but it's, well, he's specious against meat bags, I guess. That's, Trumpy uh, robot. Yeah, what are you going to do? That's, that's robots for you. <laughs> so uh, I guess uh, here are the uh, answers. Number one. A, the fish with its genitals on its head. Oh, yeah, I got uh, that one. Booyah! I did not. Jeez. I know a lot about current events because I'm a public radio host. <laughs> did you actually hear about that story? No, absolutely the, not. The fish genital story? <laughs> no, I just have genitals on my head, so I sort of relate to <laughs> uh, it. So you feel it's, it's yeah. normal. <laughs> uh, number two... D, death carrot could hold the key to new cancer drugs. Oh, man. That is seriously a thing. Oh, I crossed I out D and then I put poison celery. I had murder <laughs> beans. I put murder beans because those sound awesome. I hope they actually exist. I don't care if they cure cancer or not. I just want I just want murder beans. That's actually Rockefeller Records recording artist Beanie Siegel's next record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, B, abdominal porthole reveals how tumors come together. Oh, yeah. Man. B, Yay. Oh, you got, got that? one. <laughs> that is super gross. They have those for cows, uh, and they just put them in the stomach, and you can watch, you can like stick your hand in and see your hand mm. in that window. My so. friend Mary Roach actually did that. <laughs> yeah, she told me about it. She said it was super, super, super gross. But you should buy her upcoming book about it. <laughs> I've it's seen... called Maybe Guts, I think it's called. Oh, I'm into it. It's called Gulp, Adventures on the Elementary Canal by Mary Roach. It's not yet released at the time of this podcast, but check our website for an Amazon link where you can pre-order 
Mary's book. Number four, violin strings. The answer is B, spider silk spun into violin strings. All right. I got yeah. that one. You both got. I, how did I not get that? You should probably know more about spiders, <laughs> dummy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that could be the problem because I am deathly afraid of spiders. Well, I feel the same way about violins, and it didn't stop me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have that recurring dream for the ring, first violin string? <laughs> Attacked by violins in the shower. Spiders are playing eight violins at <laughs> once. Uh, number five. A, fiber optics to connect Japan to the UK via the Arctic. Yeah. What did I write down? Yeah, I Damn got it. that. I uh, that's got the... three out of five. That's pretty good. That is me for too. For a guy that went to arts high school? Come <laughs> on. And I'm hearing a lot of dammits coming from your direction, there, Chan. There are a lot of dammits. After the first round, Chan's got two. Dave's got three. Jesse's got three. So this is a tight race, y'all. Looking good. Yeah, this might be the first time I'm starting out uh, behind. Yeah, this is it's an unusual position for Chan to be behind. And I like the feeling of being ahead. Okay, cool. Next episode, we'll find out who takes this all. Do we have to <laughs> ask the quiz bot its Twitter handle? <laughs> Chan here with Chacho and special guest Jesse Thorne. Facebook has been around since the 16th century. Sort of. Kind of. The the oh, impulse Jesus. was there. The, the Facebook was nothing new, despite what Jesse Eisenberg would have you believe. Is my timeline going to go all the way back to the 16th century now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Facebook events will include things like the Magna Carta. Things that uh, you should know anyway. Tasted first potato. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, uh, a study done by um, Royal Holloway, the British Library and Reading University. They were cataloging... Oh, um, oh it was Royal Holloway University, was it? What is Royal Holloway? It's a combination university, library, and, and maker and distributor of collectible plates. <laughs> <laughs> what they did is they were looking at the works from Italian academies from 1525 to 1700, basically just going through all the letters, going through all the uh, the journals and everything. And essentially what they were doing back then is they were forming societies or groups and giving themselves funny names and passing back and forth. Status updates. Essentially the 16th century version of status updates. Tagging each other in photos. They would make oil paintings and Instagram. What's the Instagram version of that, I guess? They're just like sketches. Mailing. And then they just like smudge them. Mailing. And then painting like, too. hey, look at this. This is like 30 years ago, right? And what, then, what's the equivalent of sharing a viral video in the 16th century? Uh, syphilis. <laughs> yeah, they would just pass around things like, here's a neat new band you should listen to. And they would pass along that information. And so essentially, it's ex exactly the same. Everybody's always wanted to network. And I mean, I don't know how different. Facebook is just a modern iteration of the desire to socialize with other people. In, so were they writing things in a book and passing it around? What was the physical form of this? The letters, there were speeches, there were yearbooks, which, I mean, I guess are like the yearbooks you get in like high school, like every year. Like, a, And they were all collected into something? Well, they just all went into the archives after they're done with them. And you go to school and then you leave school and then you just uh, donate well, some them. Some of these groups or these Italian gangs are still around. Uh, they, they talk. Well, I don't know gangs. It's kind of a strong word. <laughs> It's more like one of those circles on Google. They're, they're sort of like scholarly gangs. See, I think gangs, I think switchblades, I think guns. I do not think quills, <laughs> though think I'm told the pen is mightier than the... And sing, singing and dancing gangs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, that makes sense. That's I think that's what they were doing. They talk about these... Uh, the gelati and the intronati, these uh, Italian groups that have been around for three, four hundred years. Which were apparently originally uh, puns. Like gelati was like the frozen dessert. So they're calling themselves the ice cream cones. Yeah, which sounds like a, a gang name, right? No, I, I would be terrified of a gang that called themselves the ice, the ice cream cones. Yeah, exactly. Because that's like calling your son Sue. There is, there is no way he's not going to be a badass. You wander in the wrong neighborhood and they're like, this is ice cream cone territory. You best be moving on. You snicker, they will shoot you dead because that's the only thing you can do. <laughs> we don't take kindly to Froyo around the <laughs> <laughs> um, What must be the unfortunate thing for them is that they were doing this. They were, you know, making puns and jokes and talking about their favorite bands back in, you know, uh, 1585. And... 
you know, you write a letter, you don't really think that it's going to last for, you know, 500 years. You don't think that this, the Facebook post you post about, you know, like, man, had some great eggs this morning, is going to last until the year 2513. My status Probably updates is. are timeless. You mean in reading them, they feel like they take forever? <laughs> Not going to lie. I, I, I tend to skim over your updates. Oh, yeah? No, I feel bad because as a friend, I feel like I should. Uh, well, just know that they'll you, be there still waiting for you to read when you're an old man. 500 years in the future. 500 years from now. All right. when you're. If I make it to 500, then yeah, then I'll start reading them because I will have done everything else. When you're in the really world. bored after you've assimilated yourself into the singularity. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. If you need something to do. I'm going to be spending at least 400 years having simulated sex with simulated Sama Hayek. So just know that. And then just take a minute behind to go, that in Oh, now I get that joke that Chacho made 6,000 years ago about breakfast. That was really funny. I don't think it was a joke. I think he just really liked eggs. I wish he wouldn't have killed himself because he was so upset that I didn't read his status updates. Well, that's more on you than me. <laughs> Wait till you read my letter. <laughs> that's our show. And that's our show. Thank you very much to very special guest, Jesse Thorne, our very specialist guest ever. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We've been pretty right. much scraping the bottom of the barrel. That, no offense <laughs> to the people that have come before. I Lovely. know my co host how, how, how they, was on before. So. How could they possibly take offense <laughs> to telling them all right now that they were inferior to our current oh, guests? They don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I think I mentioned um, your some of your podcasts uh, Jordan Jesse Go and Judge John Hodgman. Bullseye. Uh, also, Bullseye, I forgot to mention. What else you got going on, Jesse? Put this on my menswear blog at putthison.com. There's also a video series associated with that. But most of the stuff you can just find at MaximumFun.org. Check out MaximumFun.org. And when's the next big Max FunCon happening? Max FunCon's coming up in June, or I should say May 31st through June 2nd. We just announced the lineup, or almost have announced the lineup. You can find more information at MaxFunCon.com. It's a sort of weekend getaway that's a combination comedy festival and creativity retreat. Creativity cool. retreat. <laughs> <laughs> a retreat. All right, that's our show. Thanks for being with us, Jesse. You can find us at the sign. Science Jerks on Twitter and sciencejerks.com. You can email Chan at Science Jerk, Dave at Science Jerks. Facebook. We don't have an Instagram, do we? No. What yeah. would we be taking pictures of? No idea. <laughs> and I'm at Dave Chacho. I'm at 999 RPMs. And we'll see you next episode. Bye. <laughs> It doesn't matter how cute an animal is, if you put a glass hatch into his head, <laughs> it stops being cute. No, no, no. What if it was a baby seal? Stand. And he oh. comes up and he says, Oh, I've got a glass hatch on my head. <laughs>